There are a ton of modern hybrid systems out there, but how does Honda's hybrid system differ from the rest of the competition? What makes it unique? And more importantly, how does it work? That's what we're going to talk about in this video. This is the hybrid system that we find under the hood of the upcoming CRV hybrid, the Accord hybrid, Insight hybrid, and of course the Honda Clarity as well, and also the upcoming Fit hybrid that we're all expecting, but has not been announced just yet. Honda calls this particular system a two motor hybrid system because we have two motor generator units under the hood and both of these motor generator units are generally speaking a little bit larger and more powerful than we see in some competitive hybrid systems. Before we dive into Honda's hybrid system specifically we need to talk generally about how the competition's hybrids work. The easiest to explain is the pancake motor system. This is the hybrid system that we find in a wide variety of luxury vehicles, Mercedes hybrids, BMW hybrids, Volvo hybrids. We also see Hyundai and Kia using this in vehicles vehicles like the Sonata and hybrids that compete with Honda's product line. Basically what these manufacturers have done is they've taken a regular automatic transmission or a regular dual clutch transmission, they've deleted the torque converter and then they've inserted an electric motor and a clutch pack right there instead. When driving the vehicle electric only, the engine is disconnected from the equation. The electric motor is driving the vehicle through the automatic transmission. So the automatic transmission is still there, it's still changing gears, etc. And then when operating as a parallel hybrid, it simply closes the clutch, the engine and the electric motor can then be used to move the car forward. Regen braking happens via that transmission as well, unfortunately. That's one of the downsides to that particular system. So as you're regen braking, the power is going from the wheels through the transmission to the electric motor. It's not quite as smooth as some of the other options out there, but it's relatively inexpensive to make. Then we have planetary power split hybrid systems. This is the system that we find under the hood of the Toyota Prius, the Highlander, the RAV4, etc., but also the Chevy Volt, the Chrysler Pacifica, the Ford Escape, and a number of other vehicles in those categories. This system operates around a planetary gear set. We have two motor generator units and the engine that can feed power through that planetary gear set to the wheels. If you want to know more about that, we're going to have a separate video on how that particular system works. It is a little bit more complicated, but the important thing to know is that is not the system that Honda uses. Instead, Honda uses a two motor generator system. Here's the picture of the transmission that we find, for instance, in the Honda Accord. You'll notice that we have the two motor generator units right there on the side of the transmission. The larger one is directly connected to the wheels. The smaller one is directly connected to the engine. And that really is the important thing to understand about this particular vehicle. There is no true transmission in the truest sense of the word. Now, Honda calls this an electronic variable transmission or an ECVT. That's just to make it easier for some folks out there to understand, because if Honda said, hey, this car doesn't really have a transmission, that would sound odd to a lot of people out there. So this is the best way that people have decided to describe this system. But when you drive an Accord hybrid or a CRV hybrid, you'll notice that it does not drive like a vehicle with a traditional belt and pulley CVT. And that's all because of how this system works. At the heart of the system, we have the motor generator unit connected to the engine. So the engine is spinning, it's generating power via that motor generator unit. The power can either go to the battery to be stored for later use, or it can be shifted over to the larger motor that is driving the wheels forward. Honda mixes and matches components here, so their hybrid systems are based off of either a 2.0-liter 4-cylinder engine or a 1.5-liter 4-cylinder engine. The 2.0-liter 4-cylinder produces just under 150 horsepower, the 1.5-liter produces just over 100 horsepower, depending on which vehicle you find it in. We then have two different electric motor units so far. We expect perhaps a smaller one to be fitted underneath the hood of the upcoming Fit Hybrid. The larger of the two current electric motors in Honda's lineup produces 181 horsepower and 232 pound-feet of torque. It's a pretty healthy amount of torque because it is a relatively large electric motor. This is the one that we find under the hood of the Accord, the Clarity, and the upcoming Honda CRV. We then have a smaller electric motor that we find under the hood of the Insight that produces just under 130 horsepower and 197 pound-feet of torque. Perhaps the most critical number to understand in Honda's hybrid systems are actually the outputs of this electric motor unit unit. Because the Accord Hybrid, the Clarity Hybrid, and the CRV Hybrid, for most Americans, that is all the power you are ever going to get out of this hybrid system. And let's dive into why that is. Depending on exactly which vehicle we're talking about, under about 40 to 45 miles an hour, only this electric motor can ever drive the vehicle forward. That's just due to the overall design of the system. Whether we're pulling power from the battery pack or we're pulling it from the generator that's connected to the engine, only this traction motor is going to be driving the vehicle forward. That's because the engine can only be connected to the wheels via a fixed ratio that is about the same ratio as a manual transmission in sixth gear. 
Above 40 to 45 miles an hour, it can close a clutch between the two motor generator units and it can send power mechanically from the engine along to the front wheels without involving either electric motor. This seriously improves overall efficiency at certain speeds versus Toyota's hybrid system or planetary power split systems for an important reason, because power does not have to go from one generator unit over to the electric motor. When you're generating power with a generator unit and moving it to a motor, serial hybrid style, this is not terribly efficient. There's always going to be loss. Depending on the overall design, it could be as high as, say, 20%. Now, in a planetary power split system, that's not too big of a deal because most of the power is going mechanically from the engine to the wheels, but there is going to be a portion of this power, say about 20% overall mechanically, that is going from MG1 to MG2 to drive the wheels forward. And of that 20%, you're losing perhaps 20% overall. But in the Honda system, we don't have that loss because we can have that complete mechanical connection. Now that does mean that they have given up efficiency below 40 to 45 miles an hour. So in stop and go or slow and go traffic, it is conceivably less efficient than a planetary power split system because it can only operate as a serial hybrid at that lower speeds. But if you're operating at gentle highway speeds, then we have improved efficiency. Now, the downside here, of course, is that at higher highway speeds, it cannot change the ratio beyond that fixed, perhaps sixth gear ratio, depending on how you want to look at it. In steady state operation at those higher highway speeds, the engine is driving the front wheels alone via an overdrive ratio of 0.8 to 1, and then a final drive ratio of 3.42 to 1. So again, that's very similar to, say, a six-speed automatic transmission in that top end gear. But if you start going faster, it cannot change that ratio down or up like we would see in a planetary power split system like a Toyota Prius. So say over about 70 to 75 miles an hour, you will see a fuel efficiency benefit in something like a Toyota Camry hybrid over the Honda Accord hybrid, even though in most daily driving maneuvers, they're gonna be relatively similar. The clutch pack that connects these two motor generator units is really the interesting part of the system. Because if you're driving the vehicle gently, it will operate in hybrid or EV mode up to about 40 to 42 miles an hour, somewhere around there. It'll close that clutch. The engine will start driving the front wheels forward. Maybe it will regenerate the battery a little bit. And then the battery is honestly taken out of the equation for gentle driving. It will be used to recoup power from regenerative braking or apply a little bit of extra torque when you need to get up and over that overpass on the freeway. If you were to pass someone out on the open highway, then it's actually going to open up that clutch. The reason is the engine's going to need to spin faster to produce more power, send it over to the electric motor. But you'll notice something here. As long as that clutch is open, the maximum system horsepower you could get in the Clarity, the Accord, or the CRV is the 181 horsepower delivered by that electric motor. And in fact, the average American out there will really never experience the total system horsepower of 212. As long as my math is correct, and I'm sure all of you will correct me down there in the comment section below if I'm wrong, peak horsepower of 212 horsepower will actually occur somewhere right around 100 to 110 miles an hour. That's because that's the point where this clutch can be closed and the engine can be spinning 6,200 RPM to create its peak of 143 horsepower with the two liter engine. Now there are other speeds where you could get close to 212 horsepower, but if you want that absolute peak by the numbers, it appears it's gonna be pretty high. We see very similar things going on in the Mitsubishi Outlander plug-in hybrid because it operates on essentially the same principle. Now, the interesting thing here is that it doesn't really matter too much for the average driver out there because Honda's hybrids are still pretty quick thanks to that direct drive electric motor. That's what makes the Accord, the CRV, and the Clarity feel so peppy, and it makes them feel more like an electric vehicle for most shoppers because truly it is an electric vehicle. It's just being backed up by this gasoline engine. That's why the Accord hybrid system, even though it's delivering only about 180 horsepower in a zero to 60 run, is still just as fast as the Camry hybrid system that is theoretically giving you a little over 200 horsepower on that same zero to 60 run. A big benefit to Honda's hybrid system is the regen braking ability. Because we have this very large electric motor, it is considerably larger and more powerful than the electric motor we find, for instance, in the Hyundai Sonata hybrid. We have better regen braking ability, whether we're talking about a plug-in hybrid like the Clarity or the average hybrid like the Honda Accord. 
And because of the motor's location directly connected to the front wheels, we can have very consistent regen braking feel, which is different than we see in systems like the Hyundai Ioniq, the Kia Niro, or the Sonata, where the motor is on the other side of a stepped automatic transmission. So as you're slowing down, even gently in those hybrid vehicles, you will feel the transmission downshifting sixth gear, fifth gear, fourth gear, etc. as you come to a complete stop. We don't have that feel in the Honda hybrids. Again, it's going to feel much more like an electric vehicle. And from a business perspective, having a common family of components to pull from and big electric motors to use, it makes it easier to develop future electrified vehicles in a rapid fashion. For instance, Honda has said that we're going to have a bevy of electrified vehicles coming up soon in America. Probably not full battery electric vehicles too soon for America, but hybrids and plug-in hybrids are definitely on the horizon. Planetary power split systems like we find under the hood of Toyota's product line do require some modifications for plug-in hybrid use. So for instance, in the Prius Prime, we have some additional features inside that transmission case that allow both electric motors to drive the vehicle forward when in EV mode, something that we don't see in the regular hybrid models. But for the Honda hybrid system, all you have to do is provide a bigger battery pack and a bigger inverter because we already have that 181 horsepower electric motor. You just need to give that motor more power and instantly you have a more powerful plug-in with a more powerful electric mode option. Let's digress here for a moment and talk about the upcoming CRV hybrid. The CRV hybrid is different than the Outlander plug-in hybrid or the RAV4 hybrid because it does not use an electric rear axle. Instead, Honda decided to tweak their existing hybrid system and give it a mechanical connection to the rear. So even though this is not using a CVT, it has no relation at all to the regular CVT that we find under the hood of the CRV, it still has a mechanical all wheel drive system. So the motor generator units still operate in the same way, but instead of sending power to the front wheels, it'll send power to all four wheels with that big electric motor. So still 181 total horsepower, but it now has a full mechanical connection to the rear wheels. That means that the system could lock a center coupling and deliver power absolutely perfectly equally between the front wheels and the back wheels if it was needed. It's also going to mean you're going to have a more traditional, more sure-footed feel out on snow or slippery surfaces than you would find in the RAV4 hybrid. Now on the downside, this system may be a little bit more prone to mechanical loss since we do have those mechanical components. However, it is gonna give you a better feel out on the road. And of course, we're gonna know more about that very, very soon. So if you haven't seen that video and you're watching this after about the middle of March, 2020, be sure and hunt on our channel for that full review of the CRV hybrid. It will be coming up very, very soon. And there we have it. That's how Honda's two motor hybrid system works. This is different than the hybrid system that we find under the hood of the Acura MDX or the Acura RLX. So if you want to know more about those systems, drop me a note down there in the comment section below. We'll see what we can do as far as making a video for that. But bottom line here, most Americans will never see the rated 212 system horsepower out of the system. They may get close at those higher highway speeds, but most of us will really be right there around 190 or 180 horsepower. But honestly, it's not a big deal because overall performance in this hybrid system, thanks to that big electric motor, is better than the numbers would otherwise indicate. We have a really, really healthy amount of torque and the system overall is very, very smooth. Let me know what else you'd like us to discuss down there in the comment section below. Check out our related videos and I will see you all next week.